Hey guys, how's it going? I hope this video finds you well as always. Uh, today we are going to do the second part of uh, viruses. Now this time we're going to only focus on viral reproduction. Uh, for this specific video, um, I want you to make sure that you take Cornell notes uh, and the C notes that we're going to take are only for the reproduction of viruses. So when we write an essential question, make sure that you're only focusing on describing viral reproduction. So write, make sure that you write a Cornell note, a um, Cornell notes, and a essential question that uh, is related to the viral reproduction, which is what this video is about. Um, how do you go from this right here to something like this? And I want you to just notice here that this is a cell, this um, uh, reddish, yellow, orangey colors. Uh, this is a cell, and here in this bright green, this green neon green, is actually viruses. Uh, and this is what viruses look like. And notice what is happening right there. They're injecting that green stuff, which is DNA or RNA, and it's been injected into the cell. Now, how do you go from just few viruses to all of these viruses surrounding the cell and eventually uh, killing the cell by bursting it? Okay, and this is what we're going to talk about today. Is um, in the story. This is a video that a bacteria. We're just going to stop it real quick. Um, we're going to watch this as a class uh, before you guys do this. So I'm just going to skip it. Um, there are two types of viral replications that you need to be aware of, okay? There's two ways that viruses reproduce. Uh, some viruses do one way and other viruses are going to do the other way. The two ways, make sure that you write this down, are the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle. We're going to see what these two are and how it is that viruses replicate from these two different cycles, okay? The first one is going to be the lytic cycle, uh, and lytic pretty much means to uh, to break, to burst, to destroy pretty much. Uh, there's some different steps that you need to remember for this cycle. The first one is the viruses are going to attach to the host cell, and this is what you see in this illustration right here. Uh, virus is going to attach to it. Then the virus is going to inject the DNA into the host cell. Third step will be that the, vir the viral DNA will merge with the host cell's DNA. So the virus is going to use the mechanism inside of the cell. It's going to use the organelles and it's going to use uh, the mechanisms inside of the cell to help it reproduce. Remember, viruses cannot reproduce on their own. So instead, they're going to use the, me the mechanisms inside of the cell to uh, make their own viruses. So uh, for the third one, DNA merges together with the cell's DNA. The DNA of the virus will go inside of the DNA of the cell. Uh, and most of the time, of course, it's gonna happen in the nucleus if we're talking about eukaryotic cells. Uh, the fourth step will be that the viral DNA forces the whole cell to make copies of the viral DNA and viral proteins. Uh, remember one thing about this, okay? Uh, viruses, they do not have organelles. And so, if they do not have these organelles, well, they're going to use the organelles inside of the cell to actually uh, make their own um, proteins and their own uh, DNA, okay? Last step is that the new viruses assemble and destroy the host cell. So after it, they are being assembled together, eventually they're going to burst the cell and they're going to end up killing the host cell. Okay, so make sure that you have those five steps and you have to remember for the lytic cycle. This is the quick cycle. It happens a lot faster than the lysogenic. Uh, again, a little diagram here of the five different steps the attachment that's number one number two is delivery of dna or rna number three is going to be using the mechanisms inside of the cell all of the ribosomes and all the um, uh, 
organelles inside of the cell to produce their own proteins and nucleic acids. The fourth one is when they're going to be assembled together. So the uh, viruses will be assembled inside of the host cell. And number five is when they're going to be released. They're going to burst the cell. They're going to kill the cells um, when this is happening. Okay. Uh, some viruses that do this, the influenza viruses, now uh, it's a time of the season where a lot of people are getting the flu virus. They're getting uh, sick and it's due to the influenza virus. Uh, this is a virus that uh, affects people within a week. It's very, very quick. You have to remember that lytic means very, very quick to affect um, the cells and so you're going to have symptoms very quickly. Uh, the SARS viruses which causes SARS which is severe acute respiratory syndrome. Uh, this is a, a syndrome that um, damages your respiratory system and your lungs. And another one is uh, bacteriophages. Uh, bacteriophages are those uh, little viruses and let me see if I can go back and show you these right here. These are bacteriophages. Okay. So these are examples of lytic uh, viruses, okay? There it is, I had one picture that you can actually look at what it looks like. All right, the next one is the lysogenic cycle. And for the lysogenic cycle, you have to remember that this is a cycle that is going to take a lot longer, okay? And I'm gonna make sure that I write this down because I want you to make sure that you write it down. It takes longer than the lytic cycle it is very, very long. Um, how is it? Well, what happens during the cycle is that the um, the viral DNA is going to be injected just like the lytic. However, instead of using the mechanism inside of the cell to create more viruses, what happens is that the viruses are going to wait until it is ready to enter the lytic cycle again and then kill the cell. Now by waiting this could actually take years and years and years. It could take anywhere between seven months all the way up to 10 and sometimes even longer uh, years. Okay so it is a cycle that is going to be a lot longer than the lytic cycle. The lytic cycle within a week you see symptoms Lysogenic, it can take months and even years, like the example of the HIV virus. Um, uh, the, uh, the lysogenic cycle ends in the same way as the lytic cycle, and that's something that you have to keep in mind. Um, at the beginning, it follows the same steps. It attaches, releases the DNA, but then the DNA stays inside the cell. The cells are not going to know anything. They're going to continue reproducing normally, so they'll continue dividing like usual until eventually there's a, a trigger like an environmental change or something that triggers the uh, virus to start producing proteins and to start reproducing and then they all burst um, and kill the host cells. Um, this is just a picture here. You start off the same way. Virus attaches, releases DNA. The DNA is going to assemble together with the cell's DNA just like this. And then the cells are just going to continue dividing over time. So this is going this way. Cells divide. You have more cells that now are going to have the viral DNA inside of it until eventually they're going to start assembling together. But now they're not just in one cell. They're in millions and millions of cells. And this is something that can be very, very bad uh, news for your body if this is happening inside of you. Uh, some examples, human pep, uh, immunodeficiency virus, which is the HIV virus. This is that virus that actually is going to cause uh, the disease of AIDS, okay? So um, it's, you know, very well-known virus, and it can take years and years for people uh, to realize that they have it because it is a lysogenic type of virus. The varicella virus, which actually causes chicken pox. Um, the next one is the herpes virus that is going to cause herpes um, and another example is the human um, papilloma virus which actually causes warts and they look like those little things whoops uh, like those little things right there okay so these are four different viruses that all follow the lysogenic cycle because they take a long time for your body to realize that the virus is inside of it okay um, 
This is just an Amoeba Sisters uh, diagram that you can actually see what's happening for both of them. So you can tell in this one, this is the lytic, it's very quick. This one is the lysogenic, where the uh, DNA goes dormant uh, inside of the cell and eventually is going to burst into new um, cells with which are going to have the virus inside of it. Okay, now what we're going to do is that we're going to describe the lytic and the lysogenic cycle. We're going to compare them in this table and make sure that you do the same in your, um, in your notes. Okay, so we're going to actually do this as a class. Okay. This is a video that uh, some of you have probably already seen, but if you have some time, you can actually uh, click on the PowerPoint uh, and then uh, take a look at it. And that's going to be it. We're going to actually stop there. Uh, guys, uh, make sure that you write a, a summary for your summary sections of your Cornell notes. And if you have questions, make sure that you uh, take a little space on the question side of your notes to write some of these questions. And always, if you want to ask me some of those, please don't feel afraid to ask me those questions, okay? Um, like always, I hope you found this video interesting and helpful, and I will see you again.